How is advertising different today? Advertising has gone through a complete and total revolution. I think the best part to look at is actually to look backwards. If you think about virtually any industry, whether it's music, entertainment, telecommunications, they've gone through a complete revolution. But think about advertising. It's almost the same as it was in the Mad Men era. Yeah. Smiling pitch person gets on the screen, holds it up, buy some, it's good. Digital came along, completely changed the way that we communicate, but advertising just took our old models and used the new technology. So TV ads became pre-rolls, and print ads became banner ads, and yeah. junk mail became spam. But Jordan, one of the things I notice now is that it's not subliminal anymore, it's in your face. Yeah, absolutely. There are uh, more touch points now than there's ever been. Uh, if you think about it, 20 years ago, we had uh, TV, print, maybe radio. Now, think we have hundreds of touch points that the brand can reach out and communicate with us. Uh, we can't ignore it anymore. Uh, it's everywhere we turn. What did you guys learn when you saw this that you did not know going into making the film? What, what we learned that was totally shocking is that the advertising industry can help save the world. And it sounds kind of ludicrous because advertising is known for obfuscation, it's known for duplicity, which are sort of fancy words to use on Bloomberg. Advertising is known for being full of crap, but it, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't work anymore. So you really need to take all of our creative firepower and turn it inwards at our own behavior and build brands by improving lives. And when you improve people's lives, ultimately you're moving the planet forward. It sounds like a noble goal, but I'm sure it can't be as simple as it sounds. No, it's not. In fact, um, when we looked at uh, the traits and behaviors of great leaders, it turns out that great brands elicit those same behaviors. You think about the brands like Pepsi that elicited a generosity behavior with its Pepsi refresh. Or look at Patagonia that was courageous by coming out with Footprint Chronicles. These same behaviors that leaders have are enabling brands to win. But we are at its core talking about trust. There has to be an element of trust yep. that the consumer or the potential consumer believes what he or she is being told. Are we at that level where corporations, where businesses now understand that they do have to have that trust with the consumer? I think leading brands do. I mean, brands are completely transparent. That's why we named the film The Naked Brand. You have to embrace that transparency. So well, this isn't about a slick car salesman anymore. You have to bring a little bit more to the table than that? You are, transparency means if you make a terrible product, consumers will know instantly. And no amount of great advertising will cover that up. If you behave unethically, no amount of great advertising will cover that up. One of the things that I was interested to know about advertising and now how it might be able to counter some of the scandals that we have seen over the course of the couple of years, one of the things that comes to mind, the BP oil spill mm -hmm. and how they try to show, well, BP is on your side because we're back in here, we're going to clean it up and we're going to stay here until we get this all cleaned up. Do people believe that or are they just, do they have an inherent skepticism? No, I think that they are able to see right through that. I mean, I think brands are ultimately um, going to have to become almost lifelike. I mean, people are going to choose the brands that they want to engage with and buy from the same way they choose their friends, right? Are they trustworthy? Are they honest? Are they, do they have my back? And ultimately, um, that's going to dictate the interaction between a consumer and a brand, not some fake PR stunt that BP pulled. Okay, so if we're talking about fake PR stunt, are we at a point now with social media, aside from just television and social media, where people just see that instantly and they say, no, I, you're, you're just not going to sell me a bill of goods here? Well, it's all about authenticity. A lot of brands right now try to give people tools to share on social sure media. Sure they do, yeah. What we <laughs> think is give them a reason to share on social media. Is this a generational thing? Why does this not seem like it would have been advertising at its genesis as opposed to just trying to slip one past people? Well, I think advertising in the beginning, you go back 70 years ago, was extremely powerful. That's sure. where you would learn about new products, new services. If you wanted to buy a refrigerator, you could go, but if you didn't like what you found at a store, you'd have to get in the car and drive another 40 but minutes. It, but at that point, it wasn't just about selling something, was it? It's about, I'm, I need to give you information so you can make an informed decision on your own. Exactly. And now they've got information coming from, to them in a variety of sources, be it social media, ratings, reviews. They don't need advertising the way they once did. Um, socially conscious advertising, can it really do social good? 
Oh, I think it can. I think you look at a brand like Walmart, you know, they're easy to bash, they're an easy target, but they're also one of the biggest contributors to sustainability and eco-friendly. Their size and scale, small changes can have huge impacts down the line. That's the brands. That, I mean, we think there's a lot of promise and stuff like that and brands like that. So we, we try not to, to paint a mark on every brand that we work with or we, who we interact with. Can you talk to me very quickly about the demographics of this then? Do older people tend to think, well, no, and younger people are a little bit more optimistic about this? We've been around the world showing the film. Sure. And from a demographic standpoint, I think everybody agrees with it. Everybody. But I think younger people are much more passionate about it. How so? Well, they're, they're not used to interruptive messaging. They're not used to interruptive advertising. No, they're not, are they? No. Yeah, they, they're out there. A lot of them don't use cable TV. No offense, right? They're used to using YouTube and other forms to get their entertainment. They've got the control. So building a brand by interrupting them really doesn't work that well.